Hey Health Nuts, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole and I am so pumped about today's video. I am finally sharing five of my favorite meals that I've just never shared on the YouTube world for some reason. I make them all the time in my real life for Matt and I and my family and they're so, so good and there's really no reason why you guys shouldn't be trying them too. So I'm so excited, we got five never seen before meals that actually one of them has been featured in a newsletter like last year so if you're part of the newsletter fam you got it you can sign up down below because sometimes you get sneak peeks or recipes that i don't show until a year later so i'm so excited you guys are gonna love them and before we hop right in don't forget to subscribe it's free I post videos every single week on this channel and something very exciting is happening next month that you don't wanna miss. We've been doing lots of planning and I'm so pumped. So if you guys are in the festive spirit, you guys definitely need to be following me for December. And without further ado, let's get into the recipes. First up, we're starting with my favorite meal of the day, which is breakfast. These are my chai spice pancakes with a coconut butter maple glaze. Like many of my favorite pancake recipes, we're gonna start with a very ripe banana and I'm gonna just mash it into a bowl. The reason I love using banana in a lot of my baked goods and especially pancakes is that it adds a lot of moisture, but it also adds some nice sweetness to it. Crack in a couple of eggs. Add in a dairy-free milk of choice. I'm actually using an unsweetened oat creamer and vanilla extract. Give it a good whisk until all the wet ingredients are well combined. Next, we're gonna sift in our dry ingredients because you guys know me, I love to do everything in one bowl if I can. So I'm gonna add in my oat flour. To help our pancakes get nice and fluffy, we have some baking powder. And to give it that chai spice flavor, we're gonna add in some cinnamon, cardamom, ground ginger, nutmeg, and allspice. Oh, and of course, just a little pinch of sea salt. And then just shake everything up until all your ingredients are sifted through into the bowl. You can do this in two different bowls and then just combine the two. It's really up to you and how many dishes you wanna clean up afterwards. Give it a quick whisk just to combine. You don't want to over mix your batter. It's okay if there's some lumps. That's going to help your pancakes get nice and fluffy. Heat up a large nonstick pan with some ghee. You can also use some butter or coconut oil. And then using my handy trusty ice cream scoop, I'm going to scoop on some batter. If you guys don't have this kitchen tool yet, you are missing out. It's one of my favorites and I don't know how I would live without it. Another trick of mine is cover your pancakes with a lid. It gets them nice and fluffy and then just flip them over once they're golden. I got distracted and left mine on a little too long, but it's fine. It turned out good. They're still delicious. Time to pile them up high and drizzle them with a coconut butter maple glaze. This glaze is really easy. I have the full recipe on the blog post, which will be linked down below. Then you can top it with some banana and drizzle on a little bit of maple syrup if you like it extra sweet. Top it with some crushed nuts, either walnuts or pecans work really well on these and you are ready to dig in. These are my favorite pancakes around the colder months with all of those warming spices. It's so delicious. Next up we have my all time favorite homemade golden chicken vegetable curry. This curry is crazy good and you seriously need to make it. In a small food processor, which I'm gonna link this one down below because I use it in so many of my recipes, we're gonna add in some quartered shallots, lots of garlic, ginger root, fresh lemon juice, which I'm using my hand citrus squeezer here, oil, you can use avocado, olive oil, whatever oil you like, green onion. For spices, I have turmeric powder, curry powder, ground coriander, and cumin seeds. It's all about the spices when it comes to a good curry sauce. To balance out the heat and spices, we're gonna add in a little bit of coconut sugar and then finishing it up with some sea salt and black pepper. Pop on the lid and you're gonna process it until it's nice and creamy smooth, like a very smooth spread. You may need to stop it halfway, scrape down the sides and continue to process. And then once it's done, we're gonna heat up a large nonstick skillet with some oil. 
add in your cut up chicken. I'm using boneless, skinless chicken breast in this case, but you can use really any protein you like. Even tofu would be really delicious. And we're just gonna brown it on both sides. We wanna cook it to about 80% and then we're gonna transfer it off the heat and set aside. To the same pan, we're gonna add in our beautiful golden curry paste. At this point, you wanna to continue to stir. So we're cooking up the curry paste, but we're also making sure not to burn it. You only need to do this for a couple of minutes. It just allows all the flavors to get really fragrant and cook up before we add back in the chicken. Give the chicken a quick toss in the curry paste just to evenly coat it. And then we're gonna add in our veggies. So here I have some button mushrooms. These are super cute and you don't even need to chop them, which is nice because they're just so miniature. I also have some sweet red bell pepper that I've sliced and some fresh green peas. You can use frozen, really you can use any vegetables that you like for this dish, which I love. Every time I make it, I use different vegetables and it's delicious every time because it's all about that curry sauce base and then really anything else you can play around with and add your own kind of twist and style. Give everything a really good toss and saute it in that delicious golden curry sauce. Now it's time to add in our coconut milk. I'm using full fat canned and it's gonna just bring this dish to life and allow everything to swim in this gorgeous curry sauce and it's delicious and it's what you're gonna want to serve on top of your rice. Let this cook up and thicken with the lid off until the vegetables are tender but still crispy and the chicken is fully cooked through. Now it's time to plate. I'm just gonna serve this over some rice. I'm using jasmine, basmati is really delicious too. And you can just ladle it on with that sauce and the rice is just gonna soak everything up. It's so good. You can totally serve this too with some naan bread on the side. And it is just the most delicious weeknight dinner meal. And Matt and I have been making this on repeat. It's one of our favorites. You can garnish it with some fresh cilantro and a squeeze of lime and you're ready to serve. All right, we're shaking things up. We're making my shake and bake buffalo cauliflower wings. In a large bowl, we're gonna crack in a couple of eggs. Add in a little bit of some dairy-free milk and give it a good whisk. This is a simple egg wash that we're just gonna toss our cauliflower florets in just to help all the seasoning stick. So I quickly realized that my bowl was not big enough. I know, rookie mistake. So we just transferred it into a larger bowl so I could properly toss it and get everything well coated. There we go, this one's much better. Once everything is well coated, we're gonna get our seasoning together. For our crispy coating, I have some rice breadcrumbs here. I will link my favorite in the blog post for you guys to check out. For seasoning, I have onion and garlic powder, paprika, sea salt, and black pepper. And lastly, we're gonna add some nutritional yeast, which I just love the flavor of this stuff. If you've not had it, it has like a slight kind of cheesy taste to it. And it's a great texture too, especially for breadcrumb coatings like this one. Give it a quick mix and then set aside we're gonna add our cauliflower florets into a large bag that you can shake it up. You can also do it in a large container. I love these silicone ones. We sell them on the shop. I will link them down below. I've used them for everything and they work really good for this recipe as well. Top it with that breadcrumb mixture, seal it up and give it a good shake. Once everything is well shooken up, this is what it's gonna look like. You can just transfer it onto a baking tray lined with some silicone or parchment paper. And I'm just gonna kind of arrange all of the pieces so that nothing is touching each other. They'll get crispier this way. And we're gonna pop it into a preheated oven to bake and get really crispy. So I have some Frank's Red Hot Sauce here. I'm gonna add some avocado oil and a little bit of honey. The honey really balances out the heat in this sauce. They are still gonna be spicy, so if you don't like spice at all, you may not wanna put the sauce on them. You may just wanna have them kind of naked as is, but it's delicious and just have like a nice cooling dip on the side, which I'm gonna show you guys my favorite in just a sec. Once the cauliflower bites are done baking up, transfer them back into a large bowl, pour over that buffalo sauce, and give them a nice toss. 
I just like to go in with my hands. I feel like it doesn't damage the cauliflower bites and it just gets them well mixed. You can use tongs if you want, but clean hands are the best kitchen tool. Transfer back onto your baking sheet lined with parchment paper or silicone liner like I have, and then we're gonna bake it for another few minutes to really get them extra crispy with that sauce. It's gonna bake right in and they're just gonna be delicious, and you won't even be able to tell that they're just cauliflower dressed up. Now you're ready to serve. These are perfect for game night or just a party or if you just wanna have like a party for two, that's fine too. You can serve these with your favorite dip. My favorite for these is my avocado ranch sauce, which is in the Health Nut Cookbook. It's really cooling while still adding like all that ranch kind of flavoring and it just goes really well with these wings. Next up, we have a family staple recipe that we've been making for years and I'm finally sharing it. This is my one pot potato and vegetable egg stew. So in a large pot, you're gonna add some water about three quarters of the way up, throw in some peeled and chopped potatoes, carrots, onion that I've just peeled and quartered, a few garlic cloves, I have some dried bay leaves from my grandma's garden in Portugal, a drizzle of olive oil, and a pinch of sea salt, which I forgot to show, but you're just gonna give it a good mix and let it boil up until everything is cooked and soft. While that's cooking, we're gonna make our vinaigrette. In a bowl, I'm adding in some Dijon mustard, olive oil, red wine vinegar, minced garlic, finely chopped fresh parsley, and some sea salt and black pepper. Give this a good whisk until well combined. You can also transfer it into a mason jar and give it a really good shake to help emulsify the vinegar and the olive oil together. Oh, and I totally forgot to add some paprika. We're gonna add that in as well. It's funny, it's those recipes that you make all the time that you always forget the recipe when you're actually kind of trying to put it together and give it to someone. But don't worry, I'm gonna have the whole breakdown on the blog, a link will be down below. During the last 10 minutes of boiling for your vegetables, we're gonna add in our eggs. They're just gonna all cook up in one pot. And then we're also gonna add in some rapini that I've just destemmed. This is kind of a bitter green. I love the flavor, um, but you could also use something like kale or spinach if you don't want that bitterness, but this is so good. And the vinaigrette that we put on top really helps balance out the flavors. Give it a good mix and then just let it cook for another few minutes until the eggs are cooked and all the vegetables are tender. Ladle out the eggs so you can set them aside to peel them and then we're just gonna drain all the vegetables out. You can save that liquid, use it for a nice soup or something. I'm gonna serve it on a nice big plate. Top it with our hard boiled eggs and then drizzle on that delicious vinaigrette. This is so good. It seems so simple, vegetables and eggs. I'm telling you, it's a family favorite of mine and I'm giving you guys the recipe and this is just like the easiest thing to whip up. Next up we have my five minute Caesar dressing. It's so easy, it's dairy free. There's no nuts or soaking or blending involved. You just make it all in one bowl and whisk it up. To a bowl, I'm gonna add some water, apple cider vinegar, tahini, which is just blended up sesame seeds, for spices, I have garlic powder, sea salt, and black pepper. Nutritional yeast. And some finely minced capers in its brine. Give it a really good whisk until everything gets really creamy. And I'm telling you, no one's gonna know this is A, dairy-free, B, healthy, and C, delicious until they try it, it's so good. Serve this on your favorite salad or Caesar salad. I used a mixture of romaine, black kale, and some thinly sliced radish here, but you can use whatever combination you want. And even better, top it with my almond parm. This is a recipe from the Health Nut Cookbook. It is so good. It's made with almond flour, believe it or not, and it really does taste like Parmesan cheese. 
This dish is so cheesy and creamy and it just surprises me every time that it has no dairy at all and it's just so simple to make. There you have it, five of my favorite meals that I've never shared before. I'm so excited for you guys to try each and every one of these recipes. Enjoy, let me know which one is your favorite and I will have all of them linked down below on the blog, so grab the recipes. There you have it, my five meals that I've never shared before that are honestly my favorite. I make them all the time. I'm actually making the chicken curry tonight. It's so good. You guys need to give them a try. Let me know which one you are most excited to try in the comments down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. All of the recipes will be linked down below in the info box for you guys to easily grab, save, pin them for later, make them this week. You will love them. They're all super easy, delicious, and also healthy, which I love. So thank you so much for hanging out with me guys today. I will see you guys in my next video. And like I said, you don't wanna miss what's coming in December. It's like, it's really good. So stay tuned and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. My nose is so itchy the entire time.